Lesson 5.7, Solving Logarithmic and Exponential Equations. So the focus of this lesson is, uh, just like the title says, um, we'll be solving these um, different equations, but we're going to be doing so um, algebraically this time. Okay. So uh, the first note here says uh, a logarithmic equation is an equation that contains a logarithm of the variables. So that shouldn't be too surprising. Uh, the laws of logarithms may be used. We'll be using the, uh, the product rule, the quotient rule, and um, the exponent. Um, law at different times. Okay, so let's get started with the uh, the first example that we have right here. Example one says solve um, log base three of nine x plus log base three of x, and that is equal to four. Okay, so um, what we can start with is because we have the same base right here, we know that when we add those logarithms together, it's the same thing as we can write as a single log of base 3 and we can just multiply them okay so I'm using the product law like so okay and I'm just gonna simplify here that 9x times x is gonna give me 9x squared just like so so we now have the log of base 3 of 9x squared is equal to 4 and now at this stage what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, change this into exponential form so if you remember what this means this is saying um, 3 technically raised to the power of something that something is gonna be 4 right here is equal to 9x squared so I'm going to rewrite that as 3 to the power of 4, you can have that on either side of the equation, whatever you like, is equal to uh, 9x squared, just like so. Okay. The reason I did it like that is um, I like just leaving my variable um, where it is on the uh, left-hand side. So now that you've done that, we're uh, kind of off to the races, we can simplify. 3 to the power of 4, of course, is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or 81. And so now we have 81 is equal to 9x squared. We'll divide both sides by 9, and x squared is equal to 9. Uh, most common mistake that people make actually in a question like this is right at the end, they'll tell me that x is equal to 3, and it is equal to 3, but it's also equal to negative 3. So it's plus or minus, remember, when you take the square root of both sides. Now, before you get too excited and you think that we have the right answers, what we need to do here is we need to verify. So I'm going to write a little note here, and it's going to say must verify. So. What I want you to recall is that we know that, um, according to our laws of uh, logarithms, that x here uh, must be greater than 0. So x must be greater than 0. And so therefore, we can say that x is not equal to negative 3. Okay? So this negative value right there, we're essentially going to be rejecting. All right? So let's continue with our verification right here and just make sure that we have the right answer, that indeed x is equal to 3. The nice thing about equations is that you can um, usually always verify. So I will uh, go back to blue right here to um, do my verification. So log of base 3 of 9, and so I'm just going to substitute 3 into that uh, equation right here, plus log of base 3 of 3 is equal to 4. Okay. So now when we simplify these right here, remember what this is saying. This is saying 3, and this I should say this is a 27. So 3 raised to the power of what is equal to 27? Well, of course, 3 cubed, so I'm going to write 3 right here, is equal to 27. 3 raised to the power of something is equal to 3. Well, that something is just a 1. And so we have 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 equals 4. So we are pretty confident that our answer is correct. Okay, so you can see that we're combining a lot of different things um, from this unit into solving these um, these logarithmic equations. All right, let's go and take a look at example two right here. Okay, example two says solve then verify each equation. Well, I know I didn't do this with the last example. What I want to do first is I want to define what our x's could possibly be. And remember that we know that x must be greater than zero. So because we have six times x, that's just going to hold true for that one. That x has to be greater than zero. This one right here, because we're adding 6, we want all of that to be greater than um, 0. So we're just going to say that x must be greater than uh, negative 6. And this one right here, because we're subtracting 1, we know that x has to be greater than 1, like so. Okay. So now if we combine all of these together, because 1 is my biggest number right here, we know that really um, x is defined for values that are greater than 1. Okay, so that essentially is my restriction uh, on this equation. So at the end here, just like we did with the last question, if we get any values that are less than one, we're going to reject those. Okay, so now let's go use our uh, laws of logarithms here and uh, solve this equation. So we have log of 6x, nothing we can do really on the left hand side of the equation, but on the right hand side right here, I notice that we are adding these logs together, and so therefore we can use our product uh, law right here that, such that we can write this as log of x plus 6 all multiplied by x minus 1. Okay. Next what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to write um, both sides as exponents of 10. 
So what I can do right here is essentially I'm getting rid of the logs on both sides. So I now have 6x is equal to x plus 6 all multiplied by x minus 1. And so if you want to make a little note right here um, of what happened right here, it's that I went and I wrote um, both sides, so write both sides as exponents of 10 right there. Okay, because remember what we have right here is we're saying um, what if we just have the common log here? Uh, it tends, essentially, it's 10 um, raised to the power of something will give us this, and so therefore we can just go and get rid of the, the logarithms on both sides. Okay, so now that we're ready to go and uh, solve this right here, uh, we have 6x is equal to. I'm going to use the distributive property to um, to deal with this. X times x is x squared. X times negative one is a negative x. Then we have plus 6x, and then we have minus 6 like so. You'll notice right here that we have a 6x on both sides of the equation. Because they're both positive, those will cancel out. And now we're sitting with x squared minus x minus 6. Um, this is a lovely little quadratic that is uh, factorable. Numbers that multiply to give me, what are we looking at? Uh, negative 6 that have a sum of negative 1 are negative 3 and positive 2. When these are both set equal to 0, we get that x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 2. But remember that because we had restricted our value of x right here, x must be greater than uh, 1. We are going to then go and reject this value. Okay? So we have our answer as x equals uh, 3. On the uh, left, sorry, the right hand side right here, uh, let's go and just do a, a quick little check. So my check that I have right here, I have log, so I'm just looking at my original equation. So I have log of 6 times x, x of course being 3, is equal to log of 3 plus 6 plus log of 3 minus 1. Okay, And so if we simplify this a bit, this is log of 18 is equal to the log of, what's that going to be, 9, um, plus the log of 2, just like so. And using your um, logarithmic uh, rules again, this is the same thing that we can multiply those together. So this is going to give you log of 18, and of course both sides are equal. So we're pretty satisfied that we have the right answer with our x is equal to 3. Okay. So the only thing that might be a little bit funky that you may need to uh, ask about in class is just how we use this little rule right here. Um, but for the most part, I think that question is uh, straightforward. Okay. Let's go and take a look at b. All right, so for b here, just like with our last example, I'm going to take a look at what values of x this is defined for. And so right here, I see that x must be greater than negative 2. Uh, for this one, I see that x has to be greater than 0. And so if you look at which is the bigger of the two, um, the 0 kind of trumps out the negative 2, so we're going to say that x is defined for values that are greater than 0. Okay. So before you get solving, I always like to go and uh, figure out um, for what values it's defined for. So again, using my uh, laws of logarithms right here, uh, I have these two guys are being added together. So I can rewrite this as log of base 2 of uh, x plus 2, all multiplied, of course, by x, like so. Okay. Now, I'm going to go and rewrite this in exponential form like I've done before. The last one, of course, was of base 10, so it looked a little bit different than this. But remember what this means. This is saying um, some number, 2 raised to the power of some number is going to give me x plus 2 um, times x. Well, that number, of course, is 3. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 cubed is equal to x plus 2 all multiplied by x. Okay. So I can go now and uh, simplify this. 2 cubed, of course, is going to be 8. Uh, if we use the distributive property here, I have x squared plus 2x. Okay. I'll move everything to one side of the equation, such that I have x squared plus 2x minus 8. And then I'll go and try and uh, factor this. So uh, what numbers multiply to give me a negative 8 that have a sum of 2? Those numbers, of course, are positive 4 and negative 2. When you set each of these equal to 0, you get x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to 2. But if you remember up here, we were looking for values of x that are greater than 0. And so that means that we will reject uh, this value right here. And so we have our one answer as x is equal to 2. Okay. And so let's go briefly do a little check right here. And so for my check, I will take that value of 2 and I'll put it back into our original equation right up here. So we have 3 is equal to log of base 2 of 2 plus 2 plus log of base 2 of 2. If we simplify this a bit, we have log of base 2 of 4 plus log of base 2 of 2, like so. 
And when we apply our product rule right here, so notice that we are adding, so we can multiply those numbers. I have log of base 2 of uh, 4 times 2 is 8 right here. And if you're uh, wondering if this indeed is correct, remember what this is saying. This is saying, um, what number do you raise 2 to in order to get um, 8? Well, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so that I know that these are equivalent. Uh, 3 is equal to 3 right here. Okay? So that one is in the books. Now, we're going to change speeds a little bit here. So um, this little note that I have, it says, Note in a uh, previous lesson, lesson 5.3 to be exact, algebra is used to solve exponential equations. So that's what we're going to be dealing with now, not dealing with um, logarithmic ones, but exponential equations. Um, anyways, it said algebra could be used to solve exponential equations for which both sides of an equation could be written with the same base. So you notice here that we uh, won't necessarily have the same base. So most exponential equations cannot be written this way. Instead, logarithms can be used to um, help us solve these. Okay, So let's uh, give this a go. So example three says here, um, solve each exponential equation algebraically. Give the solutions to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so for a here, we're given 12 is equal to 4 to the power of x. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to identify what my base is. Of course, my base is 4. And so that means I'm going to take the logarithm of base 4 of each side. And when I do that, I'm going to have log of base 4 of 12 is equal to log base 4 of 4 to the power of x. Now, if you recall, when you have this, those essentially just cancel out because we're saying uh, 4 raised to the power of what will give you 4 to the power of x, and that's just going to be x right there. So we've isolated our variable, which is good. And then what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the change of base formula. And the change of base formula, if you recall how that works, I can rewrite this as log, the common log of 12, all divided by the common log of 4. And be careful there that you don't simplify that into being log of 3, because those are not the same. You would drag out your calculator right now, and we would get that um, x is equal to approximately, I think this said to round to the nearest hundredth, so it's uh, 1.7, I believe it's 79248. We will write this as 1.79. Okay, So that would be your solution like that. All right. So let's go and try another one right here. So the next one right here, again, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to identify what my base is. But it's um, a, little bit, uh, a little bit tricky right here because you have this 3 all being multiplied. Well, one savvy move that you can make right there is just divide both sides by 3 so you can get rid of them. So we now have 12 is equal to 2 to the power of x plus 1. Okay, so that looks a lot easier. Again, because 2 is my base, I'm going to, just like I did over here, take the log of base 2 of 12 and log of base 2 of 2 to the power of x plus 1. On this side, this is, of course, just going to leave me with x plus 1. And on this side, we're going to have log of 12 divided by the log of 2. Okay. And then finally, in order to isolate for x right here, I will subtract 1 from both sides, such that we have log of 12 divided by the log of 2 minus 1 is equal to x. When you round to one decimal place here, we have a solution of 2.58. Okay. Uh, finally, let's go and deal with C. So if you take a look at C here, it's a little bit complicated. You'll notice that we do not have the same base right there. So I'm not going to start by trying to identify um, a common base right here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking the common log of each side of the equation. So when I take the common log of each side of the equation, I'm left with log um, 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to log uh, 6 to the power of x. Next, what I'm going to do here, because remember what I'm trying is I'm trying to solve for x. So I need to somehow isolate x. So I'm going to try to break things up right here. I'm going to write this one now um, using my, um, x, sorry, not the exponent law, but the power law. Um, I'm going to write the x plus 1 out in front, such that I have x plus 1 log of 3 is equal to x log 6. Okay. Now, this x plus 1 that's out in front right here, um, what I can do right here is I can um, apply the, uh, the distributive property. So I can break this up because remember, I'm trying to get x on its own. So I write this now as x log 3. Okay, so I've, I've um, fed the chickens, if you will, with the x, and then the 1 is going to get multiplied by log 3, which just gives me log 3. Okay, you don't need to write the 1 out in front if you don't want. So now we have the following. So we're starting to kind of um, maybe be able to see how we're going to be able to isolate for x in a second. So because I have x's on both sides of the equations, I'm going to choose to move them to one side of the equation. I'm going to move it. doesn't really make any difference. I'm going to move it to the uh, right-hand side right here. Um, then that will leave my constant on the one side such that I have x log 6. And then I'm subtracting the other side. So I have minus x log 3. Okay. So we're getting there. Hopefully now you can notice that if you factor out an x, you will have x isolated. 
So we have x, and then in brackets we're going to have log 6 uh, minus log of 3. Okay. At this stage now, we can apply our quotient uh, law, and that'll just say that we can have x log of 6 over 3. 6 over 3, like so. Okay. Doing a little bit of uh, simplification, we have log of 3 now is equal to x log uh, th 6 divided by 3 is 2. You can do it like that because this log is being applied to both of the terms like so. And then finally here, um, how do we get uh, x by itself? Uh, we're just going to divide both sides by uh, log of 2. Okay. And so we have x is equal to the following. And so if you put that into your calculator, uh, log 3 divided by log 2, we have that x is equal to approximately, um, I think this one wanted us also to round to the nearest 100th, so we will leave it as 1.58. Okay. So um, normally what we're trying to do, at least with these last examples, is identify what the, uh, the base is going to be and, and try to get a, a common base like we did for the, the first two, A and B. Um, if we don't have that common base, then we're going to have to attack this one a little bit different where we take the common log of each side. Okay. So um, that concludes this lesson on solving logarithmic and exponential equations.